So let's do another example. This example has a few different parts. And then in this example, our acceleration is not the nice simple constant. This will make things much more interesting. After all, in one of the other videos, I showed you how to solve problems with uniform and constant acceleration. So we don't need this. But you couldn't solve this problem with the tools presented in the other videos. So in this case, you have to go to, ex to simulation. So let's get started by going through the problem. So how fast is it moving after 0 0.02 seconds again? Well, as before, we're going to set up a table of time, position, velocity, and acceleration. What's our first step? T equals zero. What's going on? Well, the car starts from rest, so that tells us the velocity at t equals zero is zero. We might as well choose the car to start at x equals zero. It's not given in the problem, which means we have a complete freedom to choose. So choose it to start at x equals zero. And now we need to solve for the acceleration. In this case, we have a formula for it. Later, we'll use forces and information about springs to solve for this, but at the moment, I'm just giving you a formula to give us something to practice with. So that's going to be A at t equals zero, which is five meters per second squared times zero squared, or A is zero at t equals zero. Okay, fine. Now, let's take our first step and go to 0 0.01 seconds. Where we're still gonna be using these two expressions. I don't want you to memorize these now, remember. These just come from the definitions of velocity and acceleration. These are just the definitions of these quantities rewritten. So it's not a new equation. It's the same definitions we've been exploring in this entire preparation. So let's start with position this time. So we start with position here, and that's going to be xi, which is 0, plus v, which is 0, and delta t, well, it's 0 0.01, but that doesn't really matter, so the whole thing is going to be 0. So our position is going to be 0. Now, let's do velocity. We're going in here. VI is zero. Looking at this equation here. VI is zero. A is uh, zero. And delta T is 0 0.01 seconds. So this goes to zero as well. All right. Is this ever gonna go anywhere? Hmm, well, it hasn't yet, but the acceleration is zero, so, so nothing's happening. Now let's try and figure out the acceleration at this particular instant. So the acceleration at t equals 0 0.01 is five meters per second squared times 0 0.01 squared. So that's going to be 0.0 give us an acceleration of 0 0.0005. Now we've got an acceleration.
and we could move on to our next interval. We'll start with position again. So xi, zero, still. vi, still zero. And our delta t is 0 0.01 seconds. Notice this is a delta t. I was very careful to actually write delta t instead of t in this case because we have a time and delta t and they're different. Here t is 0 0.02 seconds. We're two one hundredths of a second after this whole shebang started. But the delta t we're looking at is here, 0 0.01 seconds. So it's important in this case to keep in mind the distinction between time and the change in time. So do this math and you get a whole bunch of zero. Whoops, you get zero. Now let's do velocity. The initial, still zero. Acceleration, not zero anymore. Five meters per second squared times the delta t. Remember, this is delta t again. So you're going to have that. And you're going to now, when you plug this into your calculator, get five times 10 to the minus five meters per second. So it's moving, just not very fast. And this would be the answer to this question. To this question. Let's go that one extra step and talk about what's the acceleration at this time. So the acceleration would be now, this is acceleration as a function of time, not delta t, time. So we're going to use 0 0.02 here. So that's going to be 5 and so I'm going to get an acceleration of 0 0.002 meters per second squared. So the acceleration has gone up quite a bit. All right. So now we've solved this problem by hand for up to 0 0.02 seconds. Great. The next question is, where is it after 5 seconds? Well, Doing this by hand in one one hundredth of a second increments for five seconds is going to take us a really long time. You could do it, but you'd be at it for quite a while. So this is where the benefit of using a computer to solve the problem will come into play.